Good day, my name is Dave Glover. Today, I'd like to walk you through the centralized management features introduced in NetWitness version 12.1. This new capability in NetWitness allows you to manage all of the configurations and content deployments in a single location, no matter how many correlation engines, log decoders, or network decoders you have in your environment. In the past, you would be required to connect to each and every device to make these configuration changes or to deploy the required content. This requirement goes away in version 12.1 of NetWitness. We can now build groups of log decoders, network decoders, or ESA slash correlation engines and deploy the content through a policy and then assign that policy to a group. This will reduce the amount of effort that is required by an administrator to not only set up new devices, but manage the content deployed on existing devices. Let's start by logging in and taking a look at where all of this is configured. After logging in and going over to the Configure tab, we then click on Policies. In this Configuration and Content Policy is where I will start building these groups and building these policies. We'll also take a look at the Content Library, and the Content Library will automatically pull all of the information from Live and display it here. And we can see that we have Feeds, Application Rules, Log Parsers, Lua Parsers, Network Rules if there were any, event stream analysis rules, and the bundles that are available as well. All of this is in the content library and just waiting for you to deploy it through a policy to a group. What we have here is a fresh install of 12.1. We will go through building the groups and the policies for network decoders, log decoders, and the event stream analysis or the correlation engine. Where do we get started? Let's first talk about the differences between these two tabs. We have configuration and we have content. The configuration section is all about building policies for the configurations of decoders, whether log decoder, network decoder, or concentrators. This is where we can go in and set specific capture interfaces uh, and a few other things. So let's go ahead here and we'll build a group and we'll start there. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on groups, we'll click create new. Here's where we can give it a group name. So in this case, I'll just call it a coder group and then the type of service. So in this case, we'll just select decoder. It will be the same type of setup, whether we're doing a decoder, a log decoder, or a concentrator. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go uh, click the next and we'll select which decoder we want. Now, remember we selected network decoder, so that's the only one that shows up. If we click next, it's gonna say that there's no policy assigned to it. Now we haven't built the policy set yet. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click save and close. At this point, we'll go in and we'll build a new policy. Reason why is I need a policy or a policy requires a group in it. So we'll just do something very easy. We'll just call it a decoder policy. Just something very, very simple. Now, again, we choose the service type. This is a decoder. Now I could have cloned this from an existing service, but we're gonna start fresh. So we'll click next. And this is where we can start defining the different configurations to deploy for all of those decoders. So maybe we wanna go in and we wanna disable the background re-indexing. So in this case, we could click disabled. Now this is just an example. Once we do that, maybe we want one other thing. Maybe what we want to do is we want to change the rest port. So we can change it here to something random. Again, these are just random configurations. Hit enter. And now what we'll do is we'll click next. And then this is where we assign it to the group. So this is why we needed to create that group first. We click save and publish. On a decoder, on a log decoder, anytime you make configuration changes, it does require a restart of that service. If you're wanting to build these policies now, but not deploy or not make them active at this moment, you could choose to publish and restart later. In that case, you would just need to restart those services. But in this case, brand new install, we can just click publish and restart now. So you'll see here in this policy status, we are spinning, it says in progress. And it was that simple to make a change or to build those groups. As I add more decoders, once I, let's just say I spun up two or three more network decoders, I could go back in this group, click edit, and then the other ones would show up here and I could just drag those over. Once those decoders were part of that group, what would end up happening here is that the policy that we created here, and we can see what changes just by clicking on it, we can see that there's some index service changing as there's some rest service changings. As those decoders were brought into that group, they would automatically receive these policy settings. So this is where it makes it extremely easy when I have a large install. Imagine if I had five, 10 
or 100 decoders, I would have had to make this change on every single one. So by bringing that now into the configuration and policy-based management, I can build a single policy or multiple policies. If I have a group of decoders in North America, a group of decoders in South America, and a group of decoders over in Asia, I could build those three different groups with three different policies. So I'm not limited to single groups and single policies, but it's really that easy. As I set up a new decoder, I bring it into the group, automatically pulls the corporate policies for configuration that we have set up. At a high level on configuration, that was really all that was required. We had to build a group, we had to build a policy, policy was what the configurations are, add it to the group, good to go. It's that simple. Let's now take a look at the content side. So the content side is where I start building the policies for what parsers are on a log decoder, what parsers are on a network decoder, what rules are part of an ESA or correlation engine. Let's go ahead and start building those now. First thing you need to do is you need to go down here to settings and click event stream analysis and add your data sources. So in this case, I'm just gonna add it to a single concentrator. We use the trusted authentication. You could, if you wanted to, put in a username password. You can enable compression here and just click save. That is the first thing that you need to do. So you will add in all the different data sources that ESA can pull from. It's not defining which ones it is, it's defining which ones it can. And that'll make a little bit more sense as we go ahead and build a new policy. So we've got that added in. Let's go back here and we're gonna create a group. Now much the same way that we did on the configuration side, we're gonna create a new group. We'll just call it log decoders, just to be simple. Click next. And again, we're gonna select which services are part of that group. So I'm gonna keep it very, very simple and just use a log decoder group, a network decoder group, and an ESA group. Once I get that done, I wanna click save and close. And I wanna publish that just yet. So let's go ahead now and go to the policies. So we're working with a log decoder group. So let's go ahead and create this. So we'll now call this log decoder policy. Again, these can be named anything that you want. We'll go ahead and click next. And then here is where I can actually define what's on that log decoder. So for our example, we're just gonna go ahead and add the AWS parser, pick one other random one, we'll pick a big fix parser. In addition to that, I also wanna incorporate a couple of application rules. So we're going to put in the VPC modified application rule, and we'll pick another AWS uh, security group policy or application rule to that policy. So you can see here, I can add in not just parsers, but I can add in application rules. Uh, maybe I wanna put a feed in there. So let's add in this, um, the RSA OSINT feed. So we add that in there. So let's click next. And this is where we pick our groups. So we'll pick the group. And at this point, we will now go and publish that. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that it will remove any of the parsers that are not selected because they're not active. So I don't need them on there to begin with. Let's go ahead and click on publish content. And what this is doing at that point is it's going ahead and deploying the appropriate content based upon the policy to that, to that log decoder in, in question, right? The one that we picked as part of the group. So let's now go ahead and create a network decoder group. So we'll go ahead, click here, and we'll call it coder. We'll click next. So this is our decoder. We're gonna add that over here and we'll click next. Now the policy, we haven't built the policy yet. So we just build the group. So we're just gonna click save and close. Now let's go over here and go to the policies. So we'll call it network decoder policy. Click next. Much the same way now, we're gonna go over here to Lua parser because that's actually what the different parsers are that are on network decoders. So again, we're gonna randomly pick a couple of these. We'll go ahead also and grab that OSINT feed. Now I could have put these all into a single policy, uh, but I kind of just wanna walk you through how to get these set up. And we'll throw in, uh, we won't put an app, we won't put a bundle in there. Let's just throw an application rule in there. One here, just have it in here. We'll click next. And then this is where we wanna pull that network decoder group. And what we'll do is we'll click on save and publish on that one as well. So at this point we have our two groups and we have our two policies. And we can see that those are both published. We go to the groups and those are published as well. So lastly, let's create one final group, which will be our correlation group. So let's click on create new. We'll call this ESA. Again, call it whatever you want. Click next. And this is where we'll pick our correlation server. Click the uh, little plus to get it over there. And again, there's no groups, but that's okay. I mean, no policies, but that's okay. Now let's go in here and lastly create a final policy. So we're gonna go ahead and call this 
ESA policy. Click next. We'll go to event stream analysis rule. So again, these are all the rules that are in live. Pick a couple of random rules. Click next. We'll call it the ESA group. Now what we want to do here, this is a little bit different. If we save and publish, you will get an error that says failed. So what we want to do is we actually want to save and close. But if you click publish, it's not a problem. Go ahead here and click now on the ESA policy name. Once you do that, you want to click on event stream analysis rule over here and click on deployments. So this is where we need to create a deployment. Click on create deployment and we'll just call this ESA deployment. What ESA server? So there we go. And now we need to add in the data sources. If you don't have anything listed in this pop-up, it's because you didn't add them into the settings on that content page. I'll go back and show you where that was. That one, that content settings page shows you which ones you can consume from. Here is where you actually do. So we're going to select the concentrator. We're going to click done. We will click save. And then at this point, we can publish the policy. Now, when we publish the policy here, now we'll be successful. So we'll wait for this. And I want to show you one more thing here as well. If you click on this ESA policy, you're brought to this page. This is a summary of what rules you have on the system and so forth. Now I can't add any more rules on this page. What I need to do is I actually need to click on edit the policy. So when I edit the policy, that's when I click next and I go here and I can add more rules to my deployment. And then I click save and publish. There's also another shortcut here. If I go ahead and click this little checkbox and then click on edit, We'll have to wait for this to finish in the policy deployment. But once I do that, I can then click edit. And now I'm brought back to that first page where I can go ahead and add more rules to that policy. One last thing to note here, you may have some custom application rules. You may have some custom parsers that you have written. The way that those get uploaded is I click on the content library and then I can click on log device, for example, or application rule and click import. And when I do that, I'm brought with this little pop-up window and I can put my custom parser in there and it will upload it into the content library. So moving forward, this is where we'll manage all of the feeds, application rules, parsers, Lua parsers, ESA rules, and the bundles. You also have the opportunity in an application for rule, for example, to go ahead and create a rule right from within here. So this is where I can go ahead and build my application rule right within the content library. There's no need to do as we used to do before, which would be to click on settings or click on hosts, find my decoder, change from system to configuration, go to application rules, and then build them here. It's much easier now to do it within the content library and then it's available for all of the decoders uh, for consumption. You'll also notice there's something new here on this page. It says this service is managed by policy-based centralized config management. Please click here to manage the service. If you click there, it'll bring you back into the policies page. But that little setting pops up here on a few different pages uh, within here. So if we were to change this over to a log decoder, for example, we can go here, go to config. We'll see here that the parsers are enabled by centralized config management. If you need to make changes to these, you have to go back to the configure policies and then make those changes within your, in the case what we were just looking at, the log decoder policy. So that's why we go ahead and make those parser changes and so forth. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much.